it's Ryan again on Mama on Mission and today I thought I would give you a video on why Mama on Mission. I did a brief introductory video on what Mama on Mission is supposed to be about but I thought I'd give you kind of a background on where this came from and why I would even want to do it. Um, I will say that I have been a um, kind of a watcher of the homeschool community for a couple of years now on YouTube. Um, I kind of uh, I'm trying to remember who it was I saw first. It's not coming to me. But, you know, I started, like, I would find, like, one person. And I think I actually, and they have been J House of Vlogs, and they're actually, obviously, a vlogging family. Um, but they're also a homeschool family. And then it just kind of, like, I was like, wait, are there other homeschoolers on YouTube? You know, like, what is this? It kind of just, like, snowballed from there. Um, and then I ended up watching some of the, you know, greats on there. And then, like, getting into podcasts and getting all this different stuff. I'm like, wait. I'm not alone in homeschooling. Um, so I quickly got a desire to start a homeschooling channel. And then I was like, but what do I have to offer? You know, you have all of these, you know, great moms who put out great homeschooling content. And what do I have that's any different? You know, like I don't have really anything to add to that. Um, but the desi desire just kept burning and burning inside of me. Um, but I never got the guts to do it, and I never really had the time to do it, um, and I just didn't know how I could possibly add to what was already out there. So I just kept putting it off. Backtrack probably three, four years ago maybe now, um, and I got, the Lord kind of just awakened me to this um, calling to biblical womanhood. And even that term, I was like, what? You know, like I had a friend kind of mention that to me, and I'm like, what are you even talking about? Um, sorry, I have notes down here to keep me on track. So I had found myself right before this getting really discouraged because I had just had my second son, and I was a stay-at-home mom, and I didn't do anything outside of the home to earn any income, and I did not have a college degree, um, and I had just been... Um, preschool homeschooling my oldest and I was perfectly content I was fulfilled I felt great about where our lives were and it was other people well-meaning people most of them some of them not but most of them well-meaning people who were just putting these seeds of doubt in me without meaning to um, at least as far as I know they didn't mean to but just you know well aren't you gonna go to work aren't you gonna go back to work you know the boys are old enough they can you know you could send them to daycare um, don't you want to go back to school? Don't you want to, you know, get a degree? Don't you want to, you know, and they just kept putting all these seeds in there with good intentions. Um, and I just started feeling inadequate, but I hadn't before this, you know, it was just, well, do I need to go back to work? Am I not doing enough? You know, um, like I said, my life felt very full and great, <laughs> but so then my friend Crystal, if you're watching, hey, um, she kind of introduced me to this idea of biblical womanhood and what it means, you know, looking at women of the Bible and looking at what the Lord says about women, you know, what is our place? You know, do we have to work? Should we work? Um, do we have to go to college? Do we need to go to college? Uh, you know, should we stay at home? Do you have to stay at home? You know, all these different things. And I think, um, there's no solid answer to those type of questions. Um, but the basis is, you know, how do you be a woman after God's own heart? You know, that is the actual question. Um, and then I started seeing, you know, my worth isn't in a job. My worth isn't in a career, in a degree. My worth isn't even in my children, in my home, in my marriage. You know, my worth is found in the fact that I am saved you know, through Jesus. That's the basis of who I am. You know, that's my worth. And so I started looking and thinking, okay, well, if that's my worth, then what, what am I to do? What, how do I know what to do in life? How do I know if I should have a job, if I shouldn't, if I should go back to school, you know, all these different things. And what I kind of came down to was, you know, Ecclesiastes, it says, this is the end matter. Fear God, keep his commands. This is man's duty. In Romans, it talks about presenting your bodies as living sacrifices, holy um, and acceptable to God. And in Micah, it says, 
you know, this is your spirit's worship, you know, living holy before God, that is your worship. And the Bible calls us to love the Lord our God, to worship him, to present yourselves to him. So what I basically found was that, you know, my job, every woman's job, every man's job for that matter, is to worship God. And whether that be in the workforce, whether it be at home, whether, you know, whatever you do, that's our job. And it's not going to look di- look the same for every family. Um, so when I kind of got that into my head, you know, I tuned out all these other voices that were saying, you need to do this, you need to do that, you're wasting your talent, you're wasting your time, blah, blah, blah. Um, I kind of shut them out, gently, and I started, you know, diving into, okay, Lord, what does it look like for my family, for me personally, to serve you? What is that? And, you know, there's this... For a long time now, there's been like this feminist movement, and I can get on board with a lot of that. You know, um, men and women are not one above the other, okay? Um, I'm trying not to step on toes and get into touchy territory here, but I kind of have to a little bit. Um, So this, you know, the feminist movement's been going on for a long, long time. This kind of new feminist movement is more about putting women above men, and I'm not okay with that. You know, like, we are all created equal. I get that. Um, and I support that 100%, but I'm not above my husband. I'm not above anyone. You know, we are all equal in God's eyes. So how do I embrace womanhood when the culture is telling me, oh, you know, bust out of that shell. Don't be anything like what, you know, the women of yesterday were, you know, where is my place in all this? Um, and how do I embrace who God's called us to be as women? Because I am not less than a man. But I'm different than a man. Our bodies are physically different. Our minds are different. We think completely differently. And we have different strengths and abilities um, as women. So how do I honor God as I raise my kids, as I work, if that's in my future? Um, How do I honor God with my body? You know, we have the culture telling us you have to look a certain way. You know, there's one camp kind of telling you, like, look at this supermodel. This is what you need to be. You need to eat 100% whole foods, clean foods. You need to exercise six days a week. You need, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then you have this camp saying, oh, no, you're beautiful the way you are. You don't have to do anything. And it's like, eh, are any, like, are both of those right? Are neither of those right? You know, so how do I honor God with my body? Um, how do I honor him with my time? How do I honor him with my mind? You know, and all of these questions are things that Mama on Mission is going to dive into and figure out, like, and we may not ever come to an answer, you know, but let's just look at these things and what does that actually mean? Um, and how do we do all these things as an act of worship unto the Lord? And 1 Corinthians 10.31 is one of my favorite verses. It says, whether you eat or when it, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. You know, so... Every part of you, everything you do, when you sleep, when you wake up, when you're making beds, when you're changing diapers, when you're going to work, whatever you're doing, you know, that is your time, your life is God's. If you are a believer, you belong to the Lord and everything you have belongs to him. So how do we worship him in the day-to-day life? Okay, so that's the first thing I kind of looked at. The second thing was, you know, there's a million and one different ways to do this. You know, there's women who work, there's women who don't, there's women who homeschool, there's women who don't, you know, there's people who have husbands who stay home, there's, you know, everyone's life looks so different. People, you know, live on farms and raise all their own food, there's people that live in the city in apartments, you know, there's no right way. Um, And if you've never listened to Risen Motherhood, I encourage you to find their podcast and listen to them. They are so inspiring to me. And uh, they had something on, I can't remember if it was on a podcast or on their Instagram or something, but they were talking about how there's, um, different methods to living out the gospel as a woman. Um, but if we all loved God above all else, instead of forming these cliques, like, oh, I'm in the homeschool mom group, or I'm in the working moms group, or I'm in the, you know, the fitness moms group or whatever, instead of like putting ourselves in these cliques, couldn't we just celebrate our differences and say, you know what? We all do things way differently, but we all do them to the glory of the Lord. Um, And that just like really touched me because I'm like, I don't want to be in a camp, you know, and I'm a introvert to the core and I would like to just homeschool my kids and never leave my house. But I know that's not healthy. 
So I've kind of, you know, through our co-op and stuff, I've gotten to know lots of amazing women and through our church and stuff like that. But I don't want to be, you know, in this clique, in the homeschool group or in the, you know, I want to just have friends who we all do life differently, but we all do it together because we love the Lord. Um, and we all do it as unto God. So, uh, sorry, I'm trying to get back on track here. I kind of got off my notes. So I want to kind of break the clicks and figure out, you know, help women to understand there's not one right way. As long as you're honoring God and what you're doing and listening to what he has for you, you're doing it right. Um, and then coming back, you know, this was all a couple of years ago that this all started forming and it's kind of just progressed since then. So then this dream, oh, I don't know if it's a dream, this desire to start a YouTube channel just did not go away. And I was like, well, what can I add to the homeschool community, honestly? But every time there was a tag or a Q&A or something, I'm like, oh, I just really want to be a part of this. I want to do this. Um, and so I kind of felt the Lord just leading me like, well, what if you, you know, what if it's not just homeschool? And so then I was like, well, yeah, there's like the organizational stuff and there's the halls and there's the this. And that's all good and great, but I don't really, you know... Like, I might do some of that, but I don't really want to do that, God. Like, and it was like, no, what if it's something more than that? And because I already felt like there was a lot of that on YouTube too, you know, all the hauls and the organizing and the eating healthy and all this stuff. And so then these ideas just started like bombarding me. Um, you know, what if we talked about these things that I've been working through the past three or four years? You know, what if I, you know, could start a conversation among women about being a mom and about doing it unto the Lord. And, you know, yes, add in the healthy eating, add in taking care of our bodies, add in taking care of our minds, you know, all these different things, you know, but bring it all back to how do we live for God and worship him with our lives. Um, so I just took the plunge. Um, I was scared to death. I actually, you know, started the channel um, a few months ago and then just sat on it and didn't do anything with it. I made like the cover art or whatever you call that. I don't know. I'm not a techie person. And like put my little picture up there for the icon um, and then just let it sit. Um, and then actually Candace from Homeschool on the Hill. Hey Candace. Um, she is one of my absolute favorite homeschool YouTubers. Um, I kind of mentioned to her that I was thinking of starting a channel and she was like, it's hard and rewarding. And, you know, she just kind of was honest with me and it just kind of pushed me to want to do it more. And then my good friend, Misty, whom you've already met, she was like, girl, just do it. You know, um, you've got nothing to lose. Just do it. And so I am not at all a bubbly person. I do not have good stage presence and I'm sure you've already seen that. Um, I'm not good at computers and technology and editing, and I have no desire to be good at that stuff. Um, hopefully, like, a little bit of it just ends up happening because I am putting up videos and just happen to learn some of this stuff because I hate all that stuff, to be honest. Um, but I just took the plunge, you know? Like, I had Candace, I had Misty, I had a couple other friends that were just like, just do it, you know? And if no one ever watches it, then you've lost nothing but a little bit of time. And if, you know, one person watches it and you form a great relationship with one person, then you found a friend, you know, and it's going to be worth it. And I don't know, here I am. So if you have any more questions about what Mama on Mission is all about and why I wanted to start it, um, just leave them down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. But... That's kind of the basis about for what we're about here and what I hope to get from this channel. I just hope to connect with other moms and dig deep into these things and hopefully be blessed by the Lord because of it. So if you have not subscribed, I invite you to do so now and join in on the conversation and we will talk to you later. Bye.